Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So today we're working on that utility tub. Now this is a little container one of my friends at the Ann Arbor Miniature Show gave me, and it's just a plastic container, and I thought it was the perfect shape to make a wash tub or a sink utility sink for the utility slash laundry room. So I started with an idea to make legs out of these coffee stir sticks and kind of create L-shaped legs that are about the same height as the washing machine because keep in mind these two um, components need to be about the same level so it won't be difficult for the dolls to do their laundry. So I kind of keep checking as far as the depth of the tub next to the depth of the washing machine because I have to consider the leg height. So I went ahead and trimmed that lip off of the tub because I thought that would be a hindrance to the dolls actually being able to reach inside the sink. Although it seemed like it may create a nice ridge or ledge, I just thought it would be um, an obstruction to them being comfortable while they're doing their laundry. So I just removed it and I just gently trimmed it off. This um, container is nice and sturdy, but it was very easy to cut with my um, electrical or utility scissors. So after I trimmed it and got it pretty close to the edge of the tub, I took a moment and trimmed it again to see if I could get a little bit closer so it would be almost flush. And then when I got it as close as I could, I began to sand it. Now, I actually was trying to sand off those words on the side. I got a little carried away there and realized I'll just sand the edge or the ridge that I had originally cut and decided to use something else to remove those words. But I sanded it with a nail file because it was really fine and gave a nice smooth finish. Now, when it came to removing those words off the side of the tub, I opted for my acetone and it was perfect. Two swipes and the words were gone. So that was a lot easier and I didn't have to scrape up my tub. Now there was a little label on the bottom and I actually tried to remove it. It wouldn't come off, but I was able to use the acetone to remove the words on that as well. So now the tub is clean, sanded, trimmed, and ready to create the base or the leg. Now, dolls, as I mentioned earlier, I started with the concept of using the coffee stir sticks to create my base or the legs for the bottom of the tub to support it. And I began to trim the length of the tub to create the base. So I fiddled around with the coffee stir sticks and made some L-shaped legs and actually even painted them silver. And then I stopped because I wasn't satisfied with the legs and I began to work on something else. So dolls, these are the um, supports for some plastic pieces for like um, model cars. And I had these leftover pieces and dolls, you know, I tell you all the time, I don't throw anything away because I had some ideas for these. These actually look like pipes to me. So I cut some of the pieces apart, the ones that look like maybe they would be faucets or pipes that would go around a sink. And then I brought them over to the tub to see how it looked. This is another instance, dolls, where I tell you, when you're creating miniatures, you have to play. You have to see how things will work or see how they look or see what kind of feeling they give you. And a couple of the pieces looked really good to me. So I separated the sections that looked usable. And again, dolls, I left this portion of the video up to let you see that in the process of making miniatures, there's a lot of trial and error. I guess this video definitely fits in my Trash to Treasure series because these are scraps and remnant pieces left over from other projects. And they're actually the trash to the other projects. This is why I tell you, dolls, don't ever let anyone call your supplies trash. Now, dolls, after I cut the pieces apart, I realized that if I turned them in different directions, I could reattach them in different ways. Then, dolls, I began to pull out all my little findings, little bits and pieces of broken jewelry and scraps, things that I had saved. I actually had some leftover little packets from a vacation Bible school class that I used to teach when my children were small. 
and they were some pieces we never used but there's some really really nice little floral beads in there that actually look like faucet knobs i thought they would look kind of interesting and i kind of held them up to the pipes and i think they'll work but i do need to paint them yeah i think that looks good so dolls back to this tub so i kept looking at the little silver legs that i made and i really didn't like them i had some wooden sticks and then found a picture for my inspiration. I had an idea what I wanted it to look like and I figured the legs should be black. So I took a handful of the wooden sticks and painted them all black so that they would look like cast iron or wrought iron or some type of metal. I actually painted way more than I needed but that's what happens when you don't measure. So I took the pieces and actually created what I considered a table with no top. So I made like a platform portion for the tub to sit on and I originally thought I just wanted it to be a rectangular shape. Now you see the glue is kind of glumped up in the corners and I left it there dials on purpose because you know if you look at wrought iron things near the joints or where things are connected if you look close you can see the slip between the joints and it's a little lumpy so I figured the glue would look fine. So after making the rectangular base, I decided I wanted it to be a more like a capital I shape so that I could put the legs into the corners or the notches where the vertical and the horizontal bars meet. I'll show you what I mean in a moment, dolls. So I added a little additional glue because after I repositioned it, I kind of lost my footing there and I made the two horizontal bars closer so that they would be just more stable in the center. So I actually cut me four legs and I did make sure they were the same length, the same height as the legs on the washing machine so they would hit kind of the same area. And I began to glue them into the notches. And if you can see when I move my hands, what I mean by the notches, and that's gonna create a nice strong structure and it'll make it more balanced. And dolls, literally, the construction for this little base is just like you would do a table. It's just a smaller, narrower structure. Now here I am adding that little small piece between the legs to stabilize and strengthen the leg structure. And again, a little glue is oozing out, but that's fine because this is wrought iron. Mm -hmm. Now I did that on both sides and then allowed it to dry before I move on. No, dolls, I have a confession to make. That's one of my biggest challenges when I'm making miniatures because the ideas are coming so fast. I want to add the next piece, but I need to allow the other part to dry so it'll be stable. So what I did to divert my attention, I began to paint the parts that were already dry. Dolls' best practice would have been to just leave it alone until it dries and paint the whole thing at the end. Now here I'm just showing you I have added the bars to the front and the back leg. So let's allow that to dry so it'll be good and sturdy. So now that it's dry and I can safely handle it, I can glue the tub to it. So I'm just checking it for height next to the washing machine. Now dolls, as you can see, the glue dried clear, but I will be putting an additional coat of black over it. Now here I just did a quick check next to the height of the washing machine and it looks really good. And the height of the tub in conjunction with the washing machine is very important because I need to be able to spin the roller portion of the washing machine over the tub. So here I've added Gorilla Glue to the base or the leg and I gently placed my tub on top and pressed it down. Now, I do need to allow this to dry, but I just had to show you what it looked like. It looks so cute, dolls. I'm really pleased with the way that came out, and I really like the black legs better. So now that it's all dry, let me show you, dolls, how it looks next to the washing machine. So I'm just trying to adjust it to think about how I'm going to sit it in the laundry room because the holes would need to be next to the tub. And also, when you're wringing the clothes out, they need to be able to hang over into the wash tub as well. So I actually may need to change the position of the tub and the washing machine when I actually put it into the utility room. But again, this is another reason why I say, dolls, you have to play. You have to make 
it makes sense. The way you position things, the way you create, the alignment has to be right. It has to be practical. Can't put the tub on the wrong side of the washing machine or on opposite wall. So dolls, this is just a quick glimpse of how they look next to each other. I think they look absolutely perfect. I'm very pleased with the overall look of the tub with the black legs. Now here I'm turning my attention back to the pipes and faucets. So I've got all the little findings and things that I thought would work for my wash tub. And I needed to sand off the bottoms of some of the pipes so that they would fit flush next to each other when I begin to connect them. Now I did forget to add a drain to the tub, so I will take care of that as well. Now dolls, as I was going through my scraps, I found a little bag of, what are you going to do with that? And I think that some of these pieces are really going to work out. There are some leftover components from a Crism Bond kit, actually pieces left over from the sink from the rooming house bathroom. And I didn't use them, and I think they'll really work out really nicely in this project. Now here I am making the drain for the wash tub. I was putting a little piece of paper under a jump ring to make it look like a drain. So I set that aside to dry. So these are the pieces that I chose to be the faucets over the utility sink. And the way these pieces of a plastic are configured, they look just like some pipe work. So I looked at the area to decide where I would put my faucet. Now this little piece that I have, I don't really know what it is, but it looked like a faucet to me. So that's what I'm going to use it for. And as I mentioned before, dolls, this is a moment of play. I'm imagining how the dolls would utilize the sink. So I'm trying to position things in a practical way that'll work the best for them. And finally, I decided where the faucet should go. And I wanted it to be somewhat in the center because I was imagining where I would actually put the hot and cold knobs. So dolls, I've got everything laid out and my ideas are just going crazy. And I have to make decision as to what pieces to use and which ones to set aside. So I'm going to begin with the ones that I'm sure that I know how I want them to go on. And then I'll slowly eliminate the ones that are unnecessary or don't fit for this project. So dolls, in this instance, I use the Gorilla Gel Super Glue. It's nice and thick, it sets up really fast, and it holds so I don't have to worry about the pieces flopping off because the glue hasn't set. Now these are my little knobs for the faucets, the little flowery beads. They actually need to be painted. Now they definitely could have been painted with acrylic paint, but I hadn't used um, these testers colors that I had, the red and the blue, so I definitely want to give them a shot. So this is an enamel paint that's actually used for model cars and things, but I really like it a lot due to the really shiny finish. Now while those little knobs are drying, I went on to make the little drain for the wash tub. And there it is with a little black piece of paper under the jump ring. And I'm just again playing around to see how things will look. And that's how the faucet will hang over the wash tub. And I really like that those two little nubs that are sitting on either side of the faucet, I believe that's where the knob should go. So while the knobs were drying, I was beginning to consider where I would attach this additional piece of pipe work to the original unit. I originally thought to make it go under the sink as the drain, but that doesn't make sense. Again, dolls, it has to be practical. So I decided to keep that piece to go in the other direction where it will go behind the washing machine. Now here, dolls, I'm actually doing the last little check so I can add the little drain. And there it is, the little jump ring with the black paper behind it. And I'm adding a little dot of the Gorilla Gel glue to the corner of the wash tub. It seemed like when I used to see wash tubs, the drain would not be in the center. It would be over to the side, and sometime the sink would actually be slanted to force the water down the drain. Now, that was, although my sink is not slanted, I like the idea of it being off-center as far as the drain. I think that looks really cute. 
And here, dolls, I'm just looking at the faucet again. I'm really pleased with the way that faucet looks and it's dry and I can handle it. So I'm just looking at the other parts of the pipe work to determine where I'm going to put those knobs. And I definitely need to paint those little white parts and put little uh, pipe caps on the ends where I'm not using them. Now in that little bag of what are you keeping that for, I found some little faucets and they're the right scale and they're really old fashioned vintage looking. So I thought they would work great. So I put a really teeny dab of the Gorilla Super Glue Gel on that area where I wanted the faucet to be. And I gently just laid it on top of the glob of glue. And it's so awesome because that gel glue catches really nicely and it doesn't move around and it dries absolutely clear. And I put it on the other side and did the exact same thing. Just sat it right on top of the glob of glue and kind of pushed it. Now, although it looks like I touched it, I didn't touch it with my hands. I just pushed it so that it would kind of like align properly so it wouldn't be crooked. Yeah, I like that, dolls. I think those little faucets look good. Just pushing it up. I hope it's not dry yet. Just pushing it just to make sure it's straight. So I'm going to allow that to dry, but that looks really good. I really, really like the way that looks. But everything definitely looks too bright and clean for utility room. So you know that distressing is in the future for these pipes. But I will allow them to dry. I have to admit, dolls, I really love projects like this. Where I turn something that somebody else would have thrown away into something really lovely. This is why, dolls, you have to develop the eye of a miniaturist. So you can see things that other people just don't see. So here, dolls, I'm considering where I'm going to add those red and blue knobs. And I'm also considering where I'm going to attach that additional pipe. But the additional pipes are kind of jagged because when I cut them, they didn't cut clean. So they will need to be sanded. So let's go ahead and add those little red and blue knobs. So they're nice and dry now. And I've decided where I wanted to put them. So again, I'm using my super glue gel and just adding a little dot. I just need a little dab because this stuff works really, really great. And it's going to make a connection that it'll break before it comes off. So I'm picking it up with my little, well, it should be tweezers, but it's actually my wire cutters. So I'm just dropping it on there and tapping it. Okay. And allowing that to dry. That looks good. I love the way that looks. It looks more realistic already. So let me go ahead and put the dabs in where I'm going to put the red ones. And keep in mind, dolls, when you're using the Gorilla Gel Super Glue, you only need a teeny weeny dab, like almost like a pin drop. And it's going to work really, really good. And I'm going to actually tap that just to position it a little bit because it catches really well. But you don't have to use a whole lot to get good adhesion. That looks really, really good. I'm actually truly loving this project, dolls. So while those faucets are drying, I had sanded the two pipes that I wanted to connect and go in the opposite direction. So I sanded them both flat so that I'll get good adhesion between the two joints. And then I took a little cocktail straw and just cut it and then split it up the middle and created like little cuffs. Those little cuffs are going to be the little covers around the joined areas so it'll conceal and conceal if any glue oozes out. Now I split the cocktail straw so it fits like a cuff and I cover the front of the pipe. The back of the pipe will be up against the wall so I'm not concerned with that. If you're concerned and need it to go all the way around you may need to use a bigger straw rather than the little cocktail type that I have. Now, dolls, make sure when you make these connections that your pipe pieces are lined up straight. Crooked pipes will destroy the illusion, I guess, unless you're doing an abandoned house. <laughs> and I'm just saying this again. Make sure you set it straight before it dries because that glue is unforgiving. If you try to separate it, your piece will break. So make sure you only put it where you absolutely want it to join. So dolls, I think this turned out really nice. So here I am, dolls, adding my testers 
silver paint to those joined areas. And I think that turned out really, really nice. Now, always check the ends of your pipes. You see that little white part that needs to be capped off with one of the little straw pieces and painted silver as well. And I will do that before I finish this piece. Now I did touch up the paint on a couple other areas, but again, that's just preliminary before I go on to do the distressing. Now I'm not going to do the distressing in this video. I will save that for a later time. I just wanted to get the basic structure together. Now dolls, in addition to my main structure that goes over the utility sink, I did connect a couple other pieces of the pipework pieces so again that my whole scene will make sense so i created a couple more joins to the longer pieces so i'll be able to run it into a part of the room that will lead to the actual water source so using the same technique that i used on my main faucet part creating the join and putting the connector there making sure it's straight and allowing it to dry in place and after it dried in place i painted it now dolls if you've enjoyed this video today definitely let me know in the comments also like share and subscribe and always look for me on mondays and wednesdays after 7 30 p.m eastern standard time as usual i always enjoy creating these videos for you dolls and i have so much more in store for you in the upcoming weeks so make sure you stay tuned so you don't miss the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.